The Russian sleep experiment was a Soviet-era scientific experiment. It took place during the late 1940s. In the military experiment, five prisoners were kept in a sealed chamber. For 30 days, gas was pumped into the chamber to keep them awake. But after a few days, things began to go very wrong and it ended in those prisoners literally being shells of their former selves. You may have seen this story before, but I'm sure it hasn't been explained. Some believe it to be entirely false, while others believe it's entirely true. The truth is, it's a bit of both. Today we're going to look at the actual full story of the Russian sleep experiment, and also, once and for all, determine what's true and what's false. I'm Charlie, and today we're going to look at what was the Russian sleep experiment. Before we get into it, why not subscribe and press the notification bell? In the late 1940s, the Soviet Union was in the midst of World War II. During this time, they'd created a stimulant. They had hoped that, if breathed in, this would keep their soldiers up for a long amount of time. This can be very helpful in battle, as it can keep you more awake, and it also makes you much stronger than your enemy. That's because, while they will need to sleep, you won't. Other countries actually did this, for example Germany. German soldiers would use amphetamines to keep them awake. And even the American and British troops would use benzedrine. But the Soviets had created their own version of this. Except it was far more powerful than anything else other countries had. They'd created something that they thought could win them the entire war and perhaps future wars with the West. But before giving this to their own troops, they needed some guinea pigs. Human guinea pigs, that is. They decided to use some prisoners of war, of which they had many during World War II. They set up a metal chamber. This was basically a small metal room. They had no CCTV cameras back then. So instead, all they had was microphones and a 5-inch thick glass porthole-sized window. This is so they could look in and monitor the test subjects. The chamber had books, cots to sleep in, but no bedding. It also had running water, a toilet, and some dried food to last over one month. They picked out five political prisoners deemed enemies of the state during World War II. They said to these five prisoners that if they do this experiment for 30 days, they will be given freedom. This was a total lie and they had no intention of freeing them, but the prisoners did not know this and agreed. They said they would be testing this gas on them and they said this would cause them to not sleep for 30 days. So the five men went into the chamber and they turned on the gas. Everything was fine and dandy for the first five days. The subjects barely complained. Their conversations and activities were monitored, and the scientists noted that on the fourth day their conversations began to get darker. They started talking about their experiences during World War II. After all, this was the event that was going on as they spoke. But after the five day mark, things began to get strange. They began to demonstrate severe paranoia. They stopped talking to one another and only talked to the microphones. They also whispered through the porthole, but this was a one-way window, so they couldn't see the scientists on the other side. Oddly, on the sixth day, many of them began to trust their experimenters more than their fellow prisoners. At first, the experimenters thought this was an effect of the gas. After nine days, things began to get very strange. One of the five prisoners began screaming. He also ran around the chamber yelling at the top of his lungs for four hours straight. He screamed so much that he'd physically torn his vocal cords. And after that, he was only able to make occasional squeaks. But what's even stranger is, the other four prisoners totally ignored this. They didn't react to it at all and simply sat there like nothing was going on. They continued to whisper into the microphones and the porthole until another one started to scream. The three non-screaming prisoners then took books apart and smeared page after page. They did this with their own mess. They then pasted these over the glass porthole so the scientists couldn't see in. After that, the experimenters only had the microphones to go off what was happening in the room. But soon, any whispering into the microphone ceased. Three days went on and the experimenters had no idea what was going on in the room. They checked the microphones every hour to make sure they were working, and they were. But they could hear nothing. And because the window had been obscured, they couldn't see into the room either. They thought it was impossible that, with five people inside the room, no sound was coming from the microphones. But based on an oxygen reading, they determined the five prisoners were still alive. On the morning of the 14th day, the researchers were getting desperate. They hadn't had any reaction from their prisoners in ages. So they did something that they said they wouldn't do at the beginning of the experiment. That was use their microphone to contact them on the other side of the chamber. They were worried that the prisoners were in a vegetative state or perhaps not alive. So they announced, we are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you'll be shot. Compliance will earn one of you immediate freedom. 
But to their surprise, they heard one single phrase in a calm voice. Using the microphones, one of the prisoners said, we no longer want to be freed. This stunned the researchers. They contacted the military who were funding the research. And after some debate, the military forces and researchers decided to open up the chamber. They did this on the 15th day at midnight. All of the stimulant gas was removed from the chamber and instead filled with fresh air. But then immediately voices began to sound in the microphones. They pleaded and begged for the stimulant gas to be turned back on. But the researchers did no such thing. Instead, the chamber was opened and the soldiers were sent in to try and retrieve the test subjects. That's when the subjects began to scream louder than ever. And when the soldiers saw what was inside, so did they. One of the prisoners was no longer alive, and the remaining four that were, were barely alive. They had not touched the food rations in the past five days, but chunks of the passed away prisoner were all over the floor. This included their thighs and chest. The four surviving prisoners all had large parts of their muscle and skin torn away. Exposed bone also protruded from their fingertips. And after closer examination, the researchers realized the prisoners had done this to themselves. The four surviving test subjects had removed their organs below their ribcage. However, the heart and lungs remained in place. However, their digestive tracts were working, digesting food. That's when the researchers realized they were digesting their own flesh. That's right, over the course of many days, they'd been eating themselves. The Russian soldiers left the facility, and they refused to come back to remove the prisoners from the chamber. Eventually, some new soldiers came in and tried to remove them, but this caused the prisoners to lash out at the soldiers. One soldier passed away, having his throat ripped out, and another one had his balls ripped off. In the struggle, another one of the prisoners passed away. He just kept screaming the word more over and over again until he passed on. The surviving three prisoners were heavily sedated. They were given 10 times the normal dose of tranquilizer, and they were soon moved to a medical facility. The two prisoners, which still had intact vocal cords, began begging for more of the gas to be kept awake. The most injured of the three prisoners was taken to a surgical operating room. But that's when doctors realized he'd become pretty much immune from any sedative. No matter how much they gave him, he would not fall asleep. His wrist broke through a leather strap holding him down, and in the struggle he broke nine bones. The second survivor's vocal cords had been destroyed. They did an operation on him and patched up his skin. But while this was happening, one terrified nurse said that he kept smiling at her. Whenever his eyes met hers, his mouth would curl into a creepy smile. Doctors also tried to give the other two prisoners the same surgery, but it was too difficult because they simply would laugh continuously. As soon as they could speak, all they would do was ask for more stimulant gas, and one of them kept saying, I must remain awake. Soon a commanding KGB officer came to see the three remaining prisoners. He saw some potential in the surviving subjects, and he ordered that they were put back in the chamber and the gas to be turned back on. The researchers strongly objected to this, but were ignored. As soon as the prisoners were told they were going to be put back on the gas, they all stopped struggling. But after hearing this news, one of the prisoners shut their eyes. The heart monitor they were hooked up to then flatlined and they passed on. The KGB commander then demanded that the two remaining subjects would be put inside the chamber again, and with them would be three of the scientists to monitor what was going on. That was when one of the scientists immediately drew his gun. He then fired it at the KGB commander. He then turned it on one of the two remaining prisoners, the one who could not speak. He fired and took the prisoner out too. The other medical researchers fled the room, and the researcher with the gun said, I won't be locked in here with these things, not with you. He then screamed at the final prisoner, what are you, I must know. The prisoner then smiled. He said, have you forgotten so easily? We are you, we are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go into the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. The scientist then aimed at the prisoner's heart and fired. The prisoner then let out three final words, so nearly free. So that's the story of the Russian sleep experiment, but how much of it is fiction? Well the answer is quite a substantial amount. The Soviets never actually developed a chemical like this, however they did use an amphetamine to keep their soldiers awake. This was similar to what the armies in Germany, Britain and the United States did. The stimulant the Soviets used was named Pervitin, but it could keep people awake for about 48 hours. Not 15 days. In fact, it would be impossible to stay up for 15 days, let alone 30. But that doesn't mean there weren't Soviet sleep experiments. A lot of Stalin's rivals were made to stay up for around 3 days straight. They did this before their trials. The prisoners would then be so tired they would recommend themselves life imprisonment. 
or worse, to be taken out by a firing squad. So there was definitely sleep deprivation in Soviet Russia, and Soviet soldiers did use amphetamines to keep themselves awake. But the story of the Russian sleep experiment is no more than just that, a scary story. But most people don't realize that it's a mix of truth and fiction. Many believe it to be totally true, while some think it's completely false, but really it's somewhere in the middle. If you want some more amazing videos, then check out my second channel. But as always, thanks for watching. There's some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.